Would you like to 10X your productivity and stop feeling so overworked and overwhelmed? Welcome to the Extreme Productivity Podcast with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. Hey everyone, Kevin Cruz here, helping you to achieve extreme productivity while also overcoming that feeling of being so overworked and overwhelmed. Now, in the last episode, I revealed the three Harvard questions that can save you eight hours a week. And today, I'm giving you four simple ways to maximize energy. And don't forget, if you're digging this podcast, I've got my new book out, 15 Secrets Successful People Know About Time Management. It has over 200 great reviews. You can see them up on Amazon.com, including this one from Misty Young, who is the CEO of Squeeze Holdings. She left a review that said, I've just ordered a case to distribute to the top leadership in all my companies. These secrets will change your life and your business. Now, I don't know who Misty Young is, but I bet she is a smart person, very successful, and I love that review. Thank you, Misty Young, for ordering a case of my books. So I'll let you in on a little secret. Even though my book has the words time management in the title, I really just put it in there because that's what people search for on Amazon and on Google. But nobody can truly manage their time. You can't manage time at all. You know, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. You know, that doesn't change tomorrow, no matter what you do, no matter how smart I am on this podcast. You have the same 1,440 minutes each day, which is also 86,400 seconds. Now, maybe you can relate to, you know, any of these examples. You know, maybe you've been reading a book, but you find that you just keep reading the same paragraph over and over and over. You catch yourself with your mind's wandering. You have no idea what you just read. It's not sinking in. Or maybe, you know, you're working on an important report and you just keep zoning out, you know, drifting off into space, you know, wasting minutes doing who knows what in your head. Or maybe you've been in on a team brainstorming session. And on that day, you could not come up with a single good idea. How productive do you feel about an hour or two after you eat that lunch? It's nap time, right? Siesta time. Have you ever actually fallen asleep at your desk? I think I have on more than one occasion. In fact, during my first company, I used to sleep under my desk. <laughs> I've never fallen asleep right in the middle of a meeting, but I've seen it happen on several occasions. So if you can relate to any of those things, you can personally understand that our physical and mental energy varies. And it has a direct effect on our productivity. We can read a paragraph once and get it, or we can read it over and over and over and still not get it. It's why consumers around the world buy over 4 billion cans of Red Bull. The company behind 5-Hour Energy, those little power shots, makes supposedly over $600 million a year. Can you believe that? So everywhere, people are fatigued and they're looking for a quick fix. But while an energy drink might bring short-term alertness, you know, caffeine or those other herbal alertness chemicals, you know, they can boost you for a short time, but it's no way to handle sort of the chronic brain fatigue that so many of us view as just sort of a normal part of life. So the real secret is... Energy is everything. If you want to boost your productivity, you need to boost your energy and focus. So without diving in too deeply into any one item in this podcast, let me touch on four simple tips. The first one is, the first secret is really to work in shorter intervals. You know, research shows that humans work best when we alternate between bursts of focused work and then immediately follow that with a short break. The most famous system is the Pomodoro method, which was developed by a guy named Francesco Cirillo. And in that system, you set a timer for 25 minutes. You work on a single task, fully focused. Don't check your email. Don't multitask. And when the 25 minutes are up, you pop up for a five minute break. Get up, move around, drink some water. And you repeat this. You know, every 25 minutes you're on, then there's a five minute break. 
Now for myself, uh, 25 minutes is a little bit short for me. I'm often really in that flow state by about minute 15 or 20, and I don't like to interrupt that uh, for the five minute break. So for myself and for many others, a good working sprint, a good working jam session is maybe closer to 50 minutes followed by a 10 or 15 minute break. Uh, Still others have written books and swear by a 90 minute cycle, claiming that that matches uh, our sleep cycle, that rhythm that is just sort of natural in our bodies. But whatever it is, and you know, you find out what works for you, but rather than just trying to push, 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 push all through for an eight hour day or a 10 hour day, instead, think about building in these little tiny breaks, not to do different work, but to get up, to deep breathely, to, to rehydrate. So physically you maintain your high energy longer. Secret number two is get more exercise. And I know you've heard that, but really I'm not talking about hardcore exercise to build muscles or to drop 10 pounds or to make you live a year longer. I mean, all those things are great if you're crossfitting your heart out. I mean, good for you. I'm talking about, you know, even just more moderate but consistent exercise. You know, it's not something that you need to do that you have to go to a gym or buy a bunch of fancy equipment. Even if you walk for 20 minutes in the morning or during your lunch break, that is going to have a measurable difference. Literally, research has measured the difference in terms of your ability to focus, your ability to be creative, your ability to make decisions, your alertness. 20 minutes of getting that blood flowing, oxygenating your brain can make the world of difference. When I'm extra, extra, extra busy, I always make time to do the 20 minute treadmill in the morning. If I've got a lazy day, I might skip the treadmill. (laughs) That's just the truth. Even though I have more time, I know that I need my brain to be at peak performance on those super busy days. Secret number three for more energy is to use tools to save energy and be more productive. Um, Maybe one of the more dramatic examples of this is uh, there's an author, Monica Leonelli. She writes fiction and nonfiction. And she used to be uh, a 600 word per hour writer. Now that's still not bad. I'm probably, I'm really slow. I'm like a 500 word per hour writer. Well, she increased her productivity to 3,500 words, right? So, I mean, exponentially improved her productivity. Now, the first thing she did was she used the Pomodoro method. So she's doing the work sprints, but then she noticed that like the carpal tunnel in her wrists and fingers, you know, were, were, were impeding the speed at which she could write. So she switched from keyboard typing to a microphone and dictation and increased her word count. Then she got another big leap in productivity when she decided to write while walking outside in the park. So she's literally wired up speaking her books, speaking her articles while she's walking physically energized, using technology to overcome the barriers of keyboard entry and using work sprints to maintain it all. Fourth secret, final one for this podcast, get more sleep. And again, I know you've heard it before, but listen to this. So there is solid research from the Division of Sleep Medicine at Harvard Medical School A lack of adequate sleep can affect judgment, mood, ability to learn, to retain information. They go on. It affects concentration, working memory, mathematical capacity, logical reasoning. All aspects of cognitive function are comprised by sleep deprivation. So how much sleep do we need? Listen, we all know they always say eight hours, give or take, right? And we all know nobody (laughs) gets eight hours. Here's where I'm going to tell you something a little bit different. Look, if you, if you can get eight hours or nine hours or 10 hours, that's great. But more important than the raw number of hours is the number of hours of deep sleep. When our body goes into deep sleep, you know, there's different sleep waves. We start out in um, the very light sleep. We go down into deep sleep. And then 90 minutes later, we're back up in that light rapid eye movement sleep. Now, the REM sleep is good for dreaming, but the deep sleep is what releases all those hormones that help us to maintain a healthy body weight. You want to lose weight? Sleep more. You know, it's the deep sleep that anchors memories, that repairs the brain. So what I always say is, you know, when I talk to all those ultra productive people, many, many, many of them, they were using, they know that the bedroom needs to be like a sleep sanctuary. 
And the problem is, is you might be waking up, meaning getting into a light sleep and not even knowing it, not even remembering it in the morning. You know, you could think that you're sleeping for a solid eight hours, but you know, if your dog or cat is walking all over you, if you know, your husband or, or wife, you know, interrupted you by coming in and making a lot of noise as they got into bed. You know, if they're watching TV with the sound on as you're trying to sleep, uh, if your kids are crying in the middle of the night, you know, all these things are interrupting you. So you need to think about how can I get high quality sleep? I'd rather have five hours of deep sleep, four hours of deep sleep than eight hours of tossing and turning. So you want to make your bedroom as dark as possible, as quiet as possible, the temperature as comfortable as possible. So that's four ways to maximize your energy, which is going to make you dramatically more productive. So how are you going to apply it? Like, don't just say, yeah, yeah, I've heard this before. I mean, you got a smartphone. Will you set your timer for 25 or 50 minutes while you're working on your most important task for the day? You do remember your MIT, right? What's the most important thing you need to accomplish today? Try zeroing in on it, shutting out all distractions and setting that timer. Instead of working, you know, at your desk through your lunch, will you go for a 20 minute walk and see how much more productive you're going to be in the afternoon. What tools might you buy to become more productive? If you're not using a second monitor for your computer, start there. A second monitor is a life changer. Maybe you need to get a microphone and start trying out dictation. You don't need Dragon Speech or one of the expensive programs. Um, you know, if you uh, have have uh, a Google email address, you can use Google Documents. They have a great built-in dictation system. A lot of people will dictate messages right on their phone. Um, both Android and Apple have great uh, uh, dictation systems built in. And what about your sleep? You know, don't just say, ah, nobody's getting any sleep. Commit to trying to get more deep sleep. You know, get rid of that night light or shut off the hallway light. Maybe you need to sleep with earplugs if there's, you know, you got noisy family members. Um, lay off the caffeine, you know, after two or three in the afternoon. You know, lay off the alcohol, you know, after six o'clock or seven o'clock at night. Alcohol can help you to fall asleep, but then it rebounds and will get you back into that shallow sleep. So those are real easy things you can experiment with that's going to give you an immediate boost of energy and productivity. So that is another episode of the Extreme Productivity Podcast with Kevin Cruz. Make sure you have subscribed to the show in iTunes or Stitcher so you don't miss in the next episode. Now I'm going to mix things up in the next episode. I am going to answer listener questions. Every day I get questions from listeners and uh, subscribers to the email list, and I'm going to answer uh, several of them live for the next episode. And if you have a question for me, or if you just want to say hi, then send me an e email. I'm at kevin at kevincruise.com. Remember, Cruise is spelled K-R-U-S-E. So until next week, remember, master your minutes to master your life. <laughs>